Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Deborah Burns about having a writer's mindset and how it can inspire professional growth. Deborah Burns, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. So nice to be here, John. Thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for joining me and taking time out of your busy day to share your insights with my listeners. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing on having a writer's mindset and how it can inspire professional growth, uh, both in our own professional lives as we're trying to develop ourselves into better, more effective leaders, but also how do, how do we adopt that kind of a mindset as we're trying to help those on our teams also develop professionally. So that's what we're going to be exploring together today. As we get started, I just wanted to share Deborah's bio with everybody. Deborah Burns is a former women's media chief innovation officer turned author and business storytelling expert. Throughout a career fueled by invention and reinvention, she's led brands, transformed clients, and took a creative detour that led to the award-winning memoir, Saturday's Child. Now, Deborah helps businesses and people invent and reinvent their companies, careers, and lives. Her second book, Authorize It, Think Like a Writer to Win at Work and Life, joins her virtual corporate workshop and online course to nurture talent, inspire personal and professional development, and help everyone live up to their potential with more successful careers. I love it. I love everything about your background <laughs> and, and what you're uh, doing and tr how you're trying to help others live more uh, meaningful and, and productive lives. Anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background before we dive on in? Well, just by way of inspiration, uh, what Authorize It does is take every single thing I've ever done before in a one big mashup, puts it all together and creates something entirely new. So it takes the business background and the strategy and it marries it with this creative, very unexpected journey I went on that was so informative and informed the world of work. And it just all came together in a new way. And I just say that as a moment of inspiration as we begin, because so much of what I hear from other people is, uh, oh, it's easy for you, or, oh, you're creative, or, but in truth, it is staying open to possibility and then being able to act on it that really makes new things happen. Yeah, I love that. Um, so maybe to start off, we, you can tell us your five storytelling lessons that you've learned throughout your life and, and then how that translates into business. And then we can get more into the writer's mindset sure. uh, specifically. So the literary world, which I immersed myself in when I wrote that first book is full of wisdom that all writers know, but the 98% of people who are not writers and never going to write a book really don't have access to. And it was a light bulb moment for me when I realized how much this wisdom can inform our careers and our lives. And so the, the five key lessons are embrace the narrative arc. Every story, every project that you work on has a narrative arc with four cycles. The what's happening is all different, just like plot points in one movie versus another. But the pattern of how it's happening is always, always the same. There is a shift something changes the landscape and you need to respond to that. And that establishes a quest 
and work is nothing more than people on a collective quest. Um, there is uh, a period of instability that comes from that because you're in new territory. That always happens. Uh, there is a period of darkness, the messy middle, where everything that you're working on gets worse and worse as you learn more and more. And then there is a period of light. Even if something is not technically successful, there is always some learning, some transformation or evolution that evolves for each one of us as individual characters in our story and for the story uh, itself. And when you understand the cycles and the patterns, you get um, much more comfortable with the rhythm and the flow of work and life. So lesson number one in its shortest, simplest form. Yeah, two, yeah, I yeah. I Go really ahead. like that. Um, and so lesson number one, how, how does that then translate over into how I go about leading in my organization? Well, you, you will be prepared for the unknown and uncertainty. You will be, you will see the, the process as normal and natural because bad things happen even when you're on the right path. And you can anticipate what's coming next. You can better manage the intended but unintended consequences that are part of every decision. It's just a series of trade-offs. And once you can do those things, you will be a much more effective leader. The, the second lesson is understand your characters. All of us have been binge watching like crazy and reading some books as well too. Um, understanding the characters around you at work, their perspective, uh, their motivations, uh, their, their hidden um, agendas were all stars of our own lives, our own show, our own movie, but at work, we're all supporting characters. It's not about you anymore. It's about the greater good. You, in order to succeed and advance, you need to understand the perspective of the people around you. And sometimes it's surprising to me how little time is actually spent on analyzing those characters and understanding that even the antagonists in your story are teaching you something about yourself that you would never have otherwise known. And if people could reframe antagonists and obstacles in that way, everything becomes easier. Um, yeah, I, I also, I think that's just super important. Of course, we need to understand self. We need to understand others. We need to understand um, the key stakeholders, the people on our team. Uh, mm -hmm. If we don't understand the key players right. we or the characters as you frame it, mm -hmm. then of course, we're not going to be uh, terribly effective in trying to lead towards collective action, you know, for whatever we're trying to accomplish. Sure. Sure. Um, and I, I think that's that's one of the biggest ongoing challenges that most leaders face is they don't fully understand what makes them tick. They're, they're certainly not capable of understanding uh, those around them. And they, they don't recognize or understand uh, the dynamics of their team that are, mm -hmm. you know, either helping or hindering uh, to accomplish what they want to accomplish. And so they end up inevitably not being able to leverage the capacities of their people. Uh, and that's what we all want. And so just knowing the, the characters and the, those individuals uh, at play uh, who are who are participating, collaborating as part of the team, that's essential mm -hmm. in order to, to move things forward in a positive way. It's absolutely essential, as is the third lesson, which is welcome conflict. It ties a little bit to my point about antagonists in your story. A story without conflict is not a story. There has to be something in the way 
of what is desired, the end result at work. There's always something in the way. So instead of looking and at conflict as bad, and instead of trying to avoid it at all costs, you have to take it into your life and see how it's making the end product better. Um, part of this is also understanding perceptions, imperceptions, and misperceptions, <laughs> because the whole story is never visible. It is always beyond your grasp. And developing those soft skills that help you to read into situations and between the lines and deal with conflict in a way that is healthy and mitigates it, but doesn't eliminate it, makes you the best kind of leader and the best kind of teammate, teammate and coworker. So that's lesson number three, which yeah, comes yeah. directly from the world of storytelling. There yeah. must be conflict. Perfect. Yeah. And, you know, we, we live in a world, like you said, people like the sense of faux certainty. <laughs> they it's like faux, the sense, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And they like the sense of, you know, everyone's getting along. And, and so there are lots of people who just are completely avoid any sort of conflict. They're going to put a smile on their face. Um, but does that mean conflict isn't really there? Of, of course not. Like the, it's mm -hmm. passive aggressive. It's bubbling mm -hmm. under the surface. Like all, conflict is inevitable. It, it's always there. The question is, is it there out in the open where you can do mm -hmm. something with it? Or mm -hmm. is it kind of behind the scenes hidden uh, where people are silently kind of undermining each other? And so just recognizing, you know, that there's a lot of really positive functional conflict that needs to occur in order for you to get to good ideas, to get to mm -hmm. good conclusions. And we just need to lean into it uh, and not- And to get to the whole story. Because what yeah, happens yeah. when we avoid conflict, we're avoiding aspects of the project or the end result that would be better if we looked at all sides instead of just going along with one kind of a line of thinking, let's say. And so I find from my work that it's becoming more and more, this one aspect is becoming more and more important with the state of, uh, of things inside of corporations today. Uh, the fourth lesson is seek the unconventional. Um, you know, you never want to read the same story over and over and over again. And today in the world of work, uh, things are disrupting, accelerating so quickly um, that our tried and true methods cannot be applied to uh, problems that once were complicated and now are complex. And we need new solutions because the historically significant is just no longer enough. And in order to get there, you always have to seek what is adjacent in between things, um, turning things upside down and shifting perspective, looking in places where you never looked before because you need new answers for these new challenges. So seeking the unconventional, um, being informed by history, but seeking what's required now is critically important to advancing one's career and getting you positioned as a, as a big picture thinker, um, but also for leaders inside of companies that wanna get that company to the next level. So unconventional thinking. And then the, the fourth, is something critical to every story, which is step into the unknown. You, you always, that's where the new awaits. And there are all kinds of writerly techniques to do that kind of thing. But if you think about your favorite binge during the pandemic, that protagonist has to leave something of themselves behind and venture into new territory. 
if they don't, there's no story. They stay the same. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, Bluer Than Indigo Leadership, The Journey of Becoming a Truly Remarkable Leader. Early in my adult life, I learned about an Asian proverb that translates as bluer than indigo. If you think about the color indigo, it is a brilliant, deep, and vibrant blue. What some would call the bluest of blues. To have something that is bluer than indigo is rare and truly remarkable. Contrary to popular myth, there is no one-size-fits-all or cookie-cutter approach to effective leadership. There's no silver bullet, no secret sauce, no go-to model that will solve all of our problems. The truth is, great leaders have all had their unique strengths and flaws, and have all had to discover and then pave their own distinctive path in their life's journey to fulfill their leadership potential. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership will help you discover your own path and explore those ordinary, everyday actions that will help you respond to an uncertain future and produce extraordinary results for individuals, teams, and organizations. And so we're all on this character arc where we're evolving with our experiences and everything that we do and emerge better. Uh, on the other side, deeper and richer in every possible way. Um, and so the only way we do that is by diving into unknown things. And it doesn't have to be life changing or life threatening uh, in, in any way. It can begin with a small step of introducing something new into your life every day, changing the way you would normally react to see what would happen. Um, one of the, the most important things that any of us can learn, it is our response to the action in our stories is the biggest determinant of our success. And so if we keep that in mind while we seek the unknown, we'll all be better off. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for walking us through uh, those five aspects. Um, and all of that, I imagine, then leads into what you describe as this, um, th this writer's mindset. Sure. Um, tell us now a little bit more about why that writer's mindset overall you think is really important in, in terms of inspiring professional growth. Well, there are a few key aspects of it that people may know. But what I'm able to do is kind of take these abstract concepts and make them accessible so that most people have an aha moment. You know, there's a lot of mindfulness um, speaking going on inside of corporations. And this is not that. This is taking that wisdom and making it actionable for someone. So a writer has to write truth has to get at the truth of a story or a character to make it resonate and engage with its audience. In order to do that, the first component of a writer's mindset is they must be an uber observer, a non-judgmental observer of life and behavior so that they can come to their own conclusions and move their story forward. We would all be wise to develop that mindset. There's a lot of uh, judging that's going on uh, today. I, I, I wanna say more than ever, but I'm sure it was awful hundreds of years ago and thousands of years ago. So it's part of human nature um, and we're, we're kind of in the, in the big, throws of it right now, uh, but stepping back and, and going 40,000 feet, the big picture view will help you to see what's going on, understand what's going on, get at the truth or root of it, and then make better decisions. So that's mindset rule number one. Be non-judgmental, 
um, and uh, an Uber observer. Number two is that um, writers are not just storytellers, they are story askers. Dialogue moves forward through open-ended questioning uh, because it reveals more about the characters. So if I say, John, did you have a nice weekend? You know, you'd say yes or no, not exciting. But if I say to you, tell me about, which is like one of the, the best openings for any question, tell me about the best part of your weekend. And then I stop talking. It allows you to tell me something about yourself and reveal sides of yourself that I never would have known otherwise. So asking people about their perspective on a work issue, um, about something in their life in an open-ended kind of way and then be an active listener, digesting and interpreting what's being said will get you um, information's power <laughs> in, in the office and it will make you more powerful. Um, at, the, at the same time, it will help you to understand the real story being told. It will um, get at a client outcome much faster. So for those leaders who have to run sales teams or marketing teams, the way you're selling today, I'm, I don't care what industry it's in, the way you're selling today is very different from how you sold in the past. You need your salespeople to be um, um, right in the moment of the conversation with the client, to have done their prep work, to ask the right questions, and to be able to, in the moment of that conversation, take in what the client is saying about their challenges or whatever is going on and be able to twist that into opportunities. And the only way to do that is by having this writer's mindset and going into your conversation and being a story asker, just like they are. It's all a balance. You can't ask question after question after question, but that's about boundaries, not about the concept. Um, so being a story asker. Um, another writer's mindset um, that is critically important is a writer is always editing. Um, we must see our work as incomplete in a, in, a, in a flow, in a process of being refined constantly, just like the writer tweaks that scene, that paragraph, that line for an hour. Work can always be better. It's not that you shouldn't have an MVP and put it out and get feedback because that too is part of a writer's mindset. Developmental editors are really critical to that feedback loop and that feedback process. But what I'm saying is when you make it about improving the work, not even so much about an individual's performance, because that has all kinds of connotations that go along with it. But when you make it about the work and the constant editing and refinement of that work, everything goes to a higher level. My book that you mentioned before is probably draft 179. Like any book that you buy or pick up at the library or in a bookstore um, is draft 200. Like, and and you, everyone needs to recognize that that first draft is absolutely terrible. And it is in the refinement and the editing that success begins to catch fire and take the work higher. 
So there's more, but I think yeah. after five lessons, three is enough. And, and those three cover a lot of territory and, and you might have some follow-up questions. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I, I think uh, you're laying out some really important key principles here. And, you know, we talk a lot about the importance of storytelling in business. I see your approach a little different, like storytelling in business. Yes, it's important. What you're talking about is taking the lessons from writing, the lessons from storytelling into how we can better lead, lead our own lives, uh, lead our teams, and ultimately help people develop in their, their professional careers and have more, more growth. And I think that's just uh, incredibly essential uh, as we move forward. Uh, so I really appreciate all of those insights. Deb, it's just been a pleasure talking with you. This time has flown by. I need to is let it you over? Get on. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I need to let you get on with your busy day. But before we close, I did want to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your book, your work, uh, all the cool things that you're doing, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Sure. Um, so LinkedIn, of course, uh, Deborah Burns there. Um, and since we're talking about business and leadership, that's number one. There's a website, um, DeborahBurnsAuthor.com, which you can learn more about the books and the workshops and contact me um, if you decide to bring me into your company to help um, your teams become more dynamic. Um, what I do with companies also brings the chief innovation officer role into what I'm talking about. So it's not just inspiration. I can work um, on specific challenges and facilitate new solutions, um, which adds a lot of value for, uh, for companies. I think the final um, note that I'd like to leave everyone with maybe is just one action um, that we can all take today. And it goes back to that writer's uh, mindset because writers face a blank page every day. Unless they take a step or an action to put something on that page, nothing happens. And so I hear from so many people that they have this idea or uh, they'd love to do this one day and the, the challenge or the inspiration, depending on how you look at it today, is just put one idea down on a piece of paper, on your computer and just write about it. What is the idea? Um, who does it serve? What problem does it solve? What would you like to do with it? Um, and then um, maybe try to make it real in some way. Name it, uh, edit it, talk to someone about it and see what happens because we don't know what's coming. And sometimes these small little um, micro steps uh, are things that enrich all our lives. Thank you so much, Deb. It has just been a pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Deb can do for you, check out her books. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership ordinary everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years with increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition. The average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership 
will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Check out Human Capital Innovations magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free interactive e-magazine with the mission to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We publish issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Take a look at the latest issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.